Well, welcome to this tutorial, which is going to look at one way to correctly mix coloured fluids in Houdini. So what we start off with is a very basic and ultimately incorrect way to mix fluids. And the first thing we need to do is make our fluids coloured. And you can do that by creating your own emitters for the fluids. And in this case, I've created two identical emitters. If we dive inside, we can see that we just have a polygonal circle. And then I'm using a point stop to add a color attribute to the points on the circle. And then we're adding this attribute here, which we don't actually need. I'll, I'll get rid of that. So we're just adding color data. And then the second emitter is exactly the same, except that we're adding a different color, red in this case. And we can see that that's reflected in the color of our two circles. And what I've used is the particle fluids tool, and I've used the emit particles from object tool to, first of all, create my fluid using this first emitter, and then add the second emitter as well. And this is the auto.network here, so let's have a look. Uh, this is exactly as it is set up by the shelf tools, except for this SOP solver here, which I've added in, and I will explain in a moment. So we've got our two emitters emitting away, and I've also created a static tank you, you can't see that at the moment. Let me just make it visible. And the tank is just some geometry here, as you can see, which I'm using uh, to contain the fluid as it's emitted. So this is just going to emit the fluid from those two circles. And by default, the attributes on the points of the circles will be transferred to the emitted particles. So in this case, the emitted particles are going to inherit the color of the points. And let's just play this through. And we can see that we're getting a colored fluid. Uh, and that color is being transferred even when we surface the fluid. And I've got to let's turn off the tank again. I've got my fluid surfacer here in this node here, which is also set up uh, by the shelf tool. And this is the node which does the surfacing. What happens is we're bringing in just the points from the DOP simulation, and then we're using this particle fluid surface node to turn those into a fluid surface. And I made a couple of changes here, but the only one that we really need to worry about is here on the Attributes tab, where I've asked this node to inherit from the points the CD attribute. Now, CD is the Houdini name for color. So what this is going to do is inherit a color attribute from the fluid points. Now, this is all very well, but of course, what we want to happen in real life is for the two different fluids, when they mix, to produce a third colored fluid in this case, because it's red and blue, it will be a purple fluid. So this scene file represents the sort of naive or basic way to achieve that mixing. And that's why I've, I've added this SOP solver here. Now, I've done a separate set of videos on a SOP solver, so I'm not going to go through it in great detail. But a SOP solver allows you to apply to a piece of geometry in your dot network, some SOP nodes. And usually what uh, happens is that you put the SOP node nodes you want to apply to your geometry inside uh, the SOP solver. So in this case, we're applying it to the geometry that we've got here, which is our fluid. And note that both of the two fluids here, though they've got different colors, are uh, in terms of the dot network a single geometric object or a single dot object. So this SOP solver is going to apply to both 
halves, if you like, of this fluid. So let's dive inside and see what we have. Now, this is the naive way to achieve some mixing. So what we do is we bring in, this is the geometry, so this is our fluid coming in, and then we're using an attribute transfer node. And I've also done a video on attribute transfer, which explains what this does. But essentially, it allows you to transfer an attribute from a set of particles around another particle to that particle. So in this case, because we've got our geometry coming into both inputs of the attribute transfer, the effect is to blur the attribute across the points in that are nearby. And uh, in this case, of course, what we're doing is blurring the color attribute. And on the conditions tab, you see we're setting a distance threshold. And here I, I've got a distance threshold of 10. That's actually massive. Uh, I could probably do with a, a distance threshold of 1. So that's going to look at everything inside a radius of 1 of the point that we're interested in. And it's going to essentially average, because I've turn the number of samples up to 10. It's going to take the 10 nearest points, it's going to average the color on those points, and it's going to make that the new color of the point that we're interested in. So in effect, this is going to blur between the blue particles and the red particles. And if you look carefully here, it is indeed producing some purple particles here in the middle. But let's have a look and see what's happening later on. Let's run this simulation on a little bit. And I'll, I'll zoom out. Well, what we're getting is not terribly realistic. Let me stop that for a second. We're getting these patches of, of purple, uh, but we're mainly getting red and blue. And the reason for that, if I just focus for a moment on the points that are being imported, the reason for that is that the collision of these blue points and these red points is tending to force all of the blue points over to this side of the tank and all of the red points over to this side. And what's happening? is although here at the center when the points clash the attribute transfer is going to average the red and blue colors to produce purple when that same particle is forced out towards the side of the tank it'll find that it only has red particles around it so it's going to revert to being red so how can we deal with this well it's obviously unrealistic because we all know that when two differently colored liquids have mixed in general. Uh, once they become mixed, they don't unmix themselves again. So what ought to happen is that once a particle has become purple, it should stay purple and not revert to being blue or red. So let's have a look at a more sophisticated way now of achieving that result. So this may look like a very similar setup and in fact I still do have two emitters. But instead of using a color attribute to determine the color of the fluid ultim or ultimately, what I'm doing here is creating a start color attribute and I'm also creating a current color attribute and by default they start off with the same value so the current color Will have the value of the start color. And you'll notice that I'm not using a color attribute. I'm only using a single float. And what I'm doing is using that float to represent the color. And I'm going to give it a value of 1 if it's red, minus 1 if it's blue, and once they're mixed together that will average out to 0 which will represent the purple color. And of course the second emitter is exactly the same except that we're giving it an initial value of minus one instead of one. So let's now have a look at uh, the Autodoc network and this is absolutely identical to the earlier network except 
as regards the SOP solver. So let's have a look now inside the SOP solver. And it's a bit, a bit, bit more complicated than the older version. So the first thing I'm doing is creating a new attribute on all of my points called new color. And this is just going to be a temporary sort of holding attribute which is being used to store the color temporarily. And I want to set it initially to the value of the current color of the point. Now, the current color of the point you can get, uh, you have to get it using a point function. You can't use a local variable because in the SOP solver the local variables aren't available. You're going to have to use the point function and of course point takes first of all the name of the geometry that you're referring to and I'm just going to take it at this node here. The current point number which is $PT that's the variable representing the current point number. The current color, cur color is the name of the attribute we want and because it's just a single float value this final index is 0. So this is going to set up the new color to equal the current color. Then I'm using the attribute transfer in the same way that I did in the earlier example. Uh, I'm mixing, in this case, the new color. And again, I'm using a high number of samples and limiting the distance of the mix. Now the new thing here is this VOPSOP. Now a VOPSOP is a way to use a VOP network to manipulate attributes on your points. So it's to perform calculations on the attributes in your points using a visual programming language. And I've done some videos on using VOPs in a shading context and really the, the, the principles are exactly the same for a VOP SOP. All that's happening is it's going to manipulate data on your points. So let's dive inside this and have a look at it. So when you first create a VOP SOP you get these two nodes the global node and the output node for free but in this case we're not going to use either of those. The first thing we do is bring in uh, the attributes that exist on our points. And in this case I want the current color and the new color attributes. So I do this by naming, by using a parameter name, parameter node, and making sure the name is the same as the attribute I want to bring in. And also uh, that the type is the same, so in this case just a single float. And I've set these parameters so that they're invisible. Uh, that's because we want them to get their values from the points in our geometry. We don't want them to get their values from the interface up here on the VOPSOP. And then the new color attribute I'm using here the same technique to bring in the new color attribute. I then take the absolute value of both of these so that takes away the sign and the reason I'm doing that is because then I can compare them and I know that when the fluid uh, is perfectly mixed uh, the value of this color attribute will be zero because the average of minus one and one is of course zero. And the rule I'm trying to implement here is that once the fluid has mixed together, it cannot become unmixed. So what we want to do is compare the new color, which is the mixed color, with the current color. And if the new color is more mixed, in other words, closer to zero than the current color, then we'll use the new color. If it isn't, then we'll just stick with the current color. Now we need to take the absolutes because of course when for example the current color is minus 1 and the new color is minus 0.5 the calculation becomes a, a little bit more complicated unless you take the absolutes. So we're taking the two absolutes, we're comparing them, we're seeing which is less than the other one and we're then using a two-way switch to either take the current color if that's the one that's closest to zero or the new color. And then I use a further parameter node here and I set this to export always. And again it's called cur color and it's got the same type float. So what this is going to do is set 
that attribute, that cur color attribute on our points to the new value. And the new value is either going to be the existing value or the new color if that is more mixed. Now, notice one of the other things about a SOP solver is that the data that comes in here is then fed back in at the next frame. So if we change uh, the curve color, that'll be remembered, and at the next frame you'll get that new value back in here, and it'll keep cycling round, and so you can keep changing it, and the fluid will mix. We need to do something else to make this work, which is here on our particle surfacer. I need another VOPSOP, and you could obviously implement a special shader which would use the cur color attribute to calculate the shading of your fluid, either red or blue or mixed. Or you can just use a VOPSOP to set up a color attribute on your points based on that cur color attribute. And that's what I'm doing here. So let's dive in. So first of all, I'm using the parameter, two parameter nodes here, first color and second color. And let's have a look at these. Uh, and I'm, I name the parameter first color, and then dollar $OS here means that that will also be the name of the attribute. So first color and second color. Now in this case, I'm not making them invisible. Uh, and that's because I want them to appear in the parameter editor here of the VOPSOP, so I can set uh, the two colors, except I've unfortunately named the both first color. Let's just change that. This is meant to be named second color. So there we are, first color and second color. You can now set that in your parameter interface. Uh, and the other attribute I want to bring in is the current color, which is an attribute on the points. And this is just a float, not a color, as you remember, and we want to make it invisible. Now the current color can, value, can vary in value between minus one and plus one, and this node here, the color mix node that we're going to use, is going to expect a value between naught and one. So I use this fit node to remap the range from minus one to plus one uh, from zero to one. So that now is in the right range for this color mix, and the color mix is mixing the first color and the second color according to the value of the cur color attribute. And then we just pipe this into the output node here into the point color attribute. So it's going to set up a point color on our points, and then as before, the particle fluid surfacer is set up so that it's bringing in that color attribute. So let's have a quick look and see what this now looks like. And I'll play through this. So our liquids meet and they become purple. We can see the purple there increasing as the liquids mix together. And the amount of purple keeps on increasing as those liquids are mixing. And eventually it's pretty much going to be completely purple which is, of course, much more like uh, a realistic interpretation of two coloured fluids mixing. So that's how to do it. I hope it's been useful.